Good morning to our Church of Arise family and to all those that have joined us this morning, our friends, our partners. And I want to pray that God will bless you and your family and keep you safe, that He will continue to prosper you in God's soul and spirit. And this morning I want to speak to you about how we are going to respond in this crisis. But before we do that, let's just open in prayer. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We thank you for all our family members, our Church of Arise family, our partners, for those that we know that are all over the world at this moment. I want to pray, Lord, for your guidance, your, your protection, your provision in your lives. And Lord, may now the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing and acceptable unto you. We pray this in Jesus' name and name. Amen. So how do we respond in a crisis? Well, South Africa and many nations of the world find themselves in the same crisis worldwide because of the COVID-19 or the coronavirus. And the question is, what should you and I be doing and how should we respond or react? This current 20-day lockdown is not only affecting our entire nation, but many other nations and the peoples of this world. And your attitude and my approach to the situation can be seen and interpreted by others in either a very negative or very positive manner. But as Christians, we are also afforded the opportunity to do introspection and reflect upon our own lives firstly, and then decide who do I want to be and how do I want others to see and remember me when this is over. So your response, my response to others is of paramount importance, which will determine how they in turn respond to Christ, respond in seeing the character of Christ in you, which will draw them to Christ. Because at all times we are still the light and the salt in this world. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 19 verse 19 to 23 says, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 19 to 23 says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. To the Jews I became a Jew, that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without the law, not being without law towards God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who were without, who were without the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things, and this is where the emphasis is, it says, I become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. And I believe that Paul, the Apostle Paul is speaking to you and me to be partakers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, winning people at all costs, becoming all things to all people at all costs. And the first thing he says that he's free in Christ. What does this mean? You see, the Apostle Paul explained to the Corinthian church why he had chosen to submit himself to his way of living by living as a servant, even though he had been set free. He further, in his epistle to the Galatians, in chapter 5, verse 13 and 40, says, You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. You see, he was free in Christ, yet he denied himself certain rights and privileges Although he was entitled to it, he was entitled to be married and to have a wife that he chose to remain single. He was entitled to receive an income for preaching the gospel, but he chose to be a tent maker in order not to impose his rights or burden others, but rather he earned his income as a tent maker. You see, he understood that even though he had been set free in Jesus Christ from all rules, regulations pertaining to the Jewish faith, to the Jewish civil and ceremonial laws of worship, he was willing to deny himself his freedom for the purpose of the gospel, to save and win others for Jesus Christ. You see, in, in Galatians 2 verse 20, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. Now, wonder if we can say that this morning, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Paul understood that even though he was free, he had decided through his baptism, which was always a reminder that he had died to self. So that in Jesus Christ, 
He was living God's will and purpose for his life, for Christ's life, and not his own, for the gain and the purpose of others. The problem is that many Christians have chosen to live according to their own selfish ways. We were only witnesses of how people went into the shops and bought so much goods that they were not considerate to the needs of those that didn't have the buying power. People live to satisfy their own fleshly nature without considering and being considerate to the needs of others. Paul chose to be a servant to all. And he writes in 1 Corinthians 9, our opening verse, he says, But though I am free from, from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win with them all. You see, during these challenging times and days that lie ahead, we will be challenged in our Christian walk in how we respond and how we become servant and serving the needs of others. We will be confronted not only with different cultures, traditions of people, ethnic groups, nationalities and diverse languages, but more important, personality types. How people respond because of their personalities that exist even within the confines of the Church of Jesus Christ, the Church of the Rice family. It is with this understanding that Paul had you and me in mind when he was speaking that we are not here to judge the behaviors of others, but rather to be a servant towards others with the purpose of winning them for Christ. A servant has no rights. He doesn't consider himself on the same social level more important than or equal to others, but rather the complete opposite. He's prepared to humble himself in order to serve the needs of others. In Hebrews chapter 6, the author writes, he says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love that you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. See, God sees all that we do. And during this time of crisis, people are fearful of causing, and people are fearful which causes them to panic and react in an irrational way. Instead of being rational, you will make it calm. But you see, it's up to us. We that walk in faith, it implies that we have the peace of God that transcends, that's beyond, that surpasses all human understanding. And because we have that peace, we remain calm and we are there to give assistance to others. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in the Gospel of John chapter 12, 26, when he says, If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant also be. If anyone serves me, once again he says, My father will honor me. The servant knows that his master is in control, and so we have in Christ Jesus our master that he makes all the right decisions. And he says he will never leave us nor forsake us in these times. He's in control of every situation that you find yourself in, even in this coronavirus epidemic or pandemic. He still protects, he provides in everything that we need. And therefore we, we never have to fear, but we continue to serve him and in serving him, we serve others. The Apostle Paul further says that all things, he became all things to all people. You see, Paul understood the purpose for which he was called, which was to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And he realized that his approach would be different to that of Peter, who ministered purely to the Jewish people. In the epistle to the Galatians, chapter 2, verse 8, he says, for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively, effectively in me towards the Gentiles. Meaning Christ working in us. Paul working to the uncircumcised, the Gentiles. Peter working towards the circumcised, the Jewish believers, the Jewish people. And so, once again, do not become settled in the same approach as you reach out to others. Without recognizing the different types of people you find yourself dealing with, especially in these trying times. Jesus chose fishermen to become fishers of men because he understood that different approaches are required to reach out to different types of people. 
His own disciples chosen were so different in their own background, their personalities, and even their professions. We had fishermen, tax collectors, and even there was a zealot among them. Jesus chose fishermen with the purpose of teaching them how to be fishers of men. Because catching fish is not that simple. Because the bait that you use for the different types of fish, the approach that you use that differs from the different styles of fishing, whether you have a hand line, spear fishing, trawling, angling, or even trapping, all different approaches for the different types of people that God wishes you to win for his kingdom. See, one approach will never draw all the different types of people to Christ. It's Paul's words, I have become all things to all people. And in this time that we find ourselves, how will we respond to the different types of people? I'm not speaking about the saved, I'm speaking also about the unsaved people. Are you willing to become all things to all people for the gospel's sake? Paul was willing to respond in different ways without compromising or watering down the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this required of him to change elements of his approach in the different environments that he found himself without conforming to the sinful elements of this world. But he stayed true to his calling and his divine purpose for which he was called. And in writing to the church in Rome, Paul encouraged them how to live for Christ in the pagan environment. But he also prepared him for the coming persecution to not deny Christ and to refuse to worship the emperor. And he writes in Romans chapter 12, he says, do not be conformed to this world. You see, a chameleon conforms to his natural environment, his, his habitat, the place where he dwells, changing color. But we don't do that as Christians. He says, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's in times of trouble, in times of crisis, that the Lord sees how we respond. Are we conforming to the ways of others? Are we being transformed to carry on or to act the how the way Jesus would want us to act? Paul understood how to observe and comply with the cultures and the religious, religious observances, observances, especially the religious Jews, because he himself was a Jew and he was a Pharisee. But although free, he chose when he was with them to observe their Jewish practices, although he knew as free in Christ. To the Gentiles, who did not observe the Jewish ways of living, he chose to, to be like them, without compromising his faith. He had empathy with those who are weak, and there are many that are weak in their Christian faith. We don't judge them. We bear with the weak. We try to understand them. We encourage them. We are there to lift them up. Paul knew that not all would respond positively, positively but at least some would. But we don't have to compromise with the world to fit in and be accepted. We don't have to respond in the way that the majority do, but rather to be Jesus to others by remaining calm, offering words of encouragement, words of faith, and words of hope. I want to close off this morning, how do we learn from Jesus? You see, even during Jesus' earthly ministry, he too was confronted by various groups of people, each with their own ideas, their own agendas, their motives. But this did not distract him from his divine calling and purpose. And even in this crisis, we're not distracted from what God has called us to be here. Jesus was confronted and he dealt with Pharisees. They were the ones who observed the law, their own self-imposed religious laws of living pure and holy lives, which in itself seemed right. The emphasis on the Torah, the law of Moses and the interpretation. And some might regard them as being self-righteous. Jesus had to deal with the teachers of the law we read in the gospel. They were very much associated with the Pharisees, a different group of people, a revival movement, the authoritative professional interpreters of the Torah. I want to say they are theologians or academics in our time that want to interpret on your behalf and my behalf. But let God teach you through His Word. They were the Sadducees. They were from the Hellenized Jewish upper class. 
which supported stable conditions, not willing to make ructions, willing to live under the Roman rule and the prevailing social order, and whose religion was reasonable and worldly, did not believe in life after death. The Sadducees actually is believed to derive their, from the, their name from the family of Zadok the high priest, who served as high priest in the days of King David. And so they had some stigma attached of where they came from. They would be today the wealthy people of social importance. They want to be treated differently, want to be recognized. They had their place, their social place. There were the Zealots. A religious group of people who had the zeal to restore Israel, a rebel organization supported arm resistance to Rome. They were the fighters. Even one of Jesus' disciples was a zealot, Simon the Zealot. There were the Herodians, a political party who were followers of King Herod, wanting to restore Herod to the throne, as well as other areas ruled by Herod, as opposed to the Pharisees who wished to restore the kingdom of David. I want to call it in our time, we call this the opposition party. And then there were their scenes, a small separatist group of, group which we call it from the Kumru community, referred to as the sons of Zadok, men of the community, members of the covenant, covenant sons of light. They also re were referred to as the modest ones, those that were pious, the silent ones. And even in our church we have them. They spend their time praying. They're quiet. They never fight with anyone. They have this outward appearance of holiness. They never confront any such situ situation. And that's not all. Besides them, there were the Romans, the rulers, the oppressors, the government of this day. Some people want to see them in that way. There were the Greeks. Those that had all the knowledge and wisdom. Even Jesus referred and said, the Jews seek a sign and the Greeks seek wisdom. So there were many different groups of people that Jesus had. But you know what? Jesus treated everyone the same. The same love. He dealt with each one showing respect and kindness. He did not confront the Roman authorities. He could he, 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 he even reached out to the Roman centurion, whose servant that was sick. He even told the people, give unto Caesar that which belongs to Caesar, and give unto God. He complied. And so we learn from Jesus how to serve others, how to become all things to all people, without compromising in order to bring in the Christ. And in responding in this crisis, this is what the Lord would want you and me to have. Just four things that I want to share with you very shortly before we close off. And I want you to consider this before we close off in prayer. Firstly, our first response, have compassion. We're all in our own homes in this lockdown. We don't always see the needs of others. Those that are using public transport. Those that are reliant on taxis. Those that still have to work. The word compassion is to suffer with. And we suffer with and we experience what others are going through. The word of God says when Jesus looked at the multitudes, he had compassion. And it was that compassion that caused him to reach out in love to meet their needs. Secondly, be considerate. Take others into account. It's not all about you. You're not alone in the boat. There are others. When you're in a store, wherever you find yourself, be considerate to the needs of others. Thirdly, be compliant. Obey those in authority over you. Jesus complied. Some people want to swim against the street. But let, in these times, as we obey our governing authorities, let's comply. Let's be good citizens. As Romans 13 says, for all authority is given by God. And when we disobey and when we rebel against them, we're rebelling against God Himself. And lastly, let us.
be consistent. Consistent in the way how we treat all others, unconditionally, sacrificially, with impartiality. Be Jesus in reaching out to the needs of others and showing them the love. This will also draw them to Christ. Be the solution and not the problem in what we experience. May God richly bless you and may God keep us united in prayer, not only in South Africa, but all the nations of the world who are experiencing this crisis. Shalom. On behalf of the Church on the Rise leadership, we want to thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, we pray that God will continue to keep you in good health and your family too, your loved ones. And we know today when we speak of loved ones, we know many people have family all over the world, from Canada to New Zealand, from the east, from the west and to the east. And so we're thinking of you and your loved ones in this time. But we want to say thank you and may you be encouraged. Remember, this is also a first for us with our live streaming. As you're joining us on YouTube, on Facebook, and the different ways that social media have given, I believe that this crisis has forced the church to use different ways of taking the gospel and the message out to people. I want to encourage you also this time to not stop your giving to the Lord. Remember, we don't pay, we give our offering to the Lord. We give our tithes to the Lord. There are many ways. We have our EFT banking through banking account. We have our SNAP scan. There are many ways. Let's continue to be faithful in our observance, in our serving, in our worship to the Lord. And I pray that you'll join us next week again. And uh, just follow the link that, that, we, that we send you. And we want to pray God's richest blessing upon you and your family. I want you just to, where you are, to raise your hands this morning as we close with a benediction. Now may the God of love and His Son, Jesus Christ, and His grace, and the Holy Spirit, and the fellowship that comes with Him, be with you and your loved ones. And we speak His shalom over you and your families. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful name.